2020 was quite a year. A lot of things happened. I mean like a lot of things. From natural disasters, to man-made disasters. Economic instability. Millions of unemployed Americans. 122 million jobs. And political instability. We did win this yeah! There were even high profile assassinations. General Qasem Soleimani was the commander of the Quds Force. One of Iran's top nuclear scientists has been killed in an ambush. Did I mention there were protests? Like, a lot of protests. And amid all of this, the entire world is dealing with a pandemic. So, did anything good come out of 2020? In a year that's been dominated by bad news, there were actually some good things, but I guess they were just, well, overlooked. So today, let's take a look at some of them. The tragic killing of George Floyd at the hands of police officers occurred at a pivotal moment in modern US history and at a time when the coronavirus only further exposed inequality. People of colour, people from minority groups and people of indigenous backgrounds have been disproportionately affected by the pandemic and there has been growing public sentiment for authorities to be held accountable for the deaths of unarmed black people. The harrowing footage of George Floyd's murder quickly spread around the world and put concerns about racial profiling and police brutality on display for everyone to see, and people responded. The Black Lives Matter movement, which started as a hashtag campaign in 2013 after the killing of Trayvon Martin, expanded into a global force synonymous with the fight for racial equality in so many countries. The movement spread all over the world as people called for changes to policing, political legislation, and for an end to racial violence. There were calls to remove or deface statues dedicated to figures of colonial history who profited off slavery and colonialism. There were moves to ban symbols, logos, and advertising that were inherently racist. And celebrities and influencers showed their support as production companies sought to be more inclusive in their casting. Athletes from most major sports showed solidarity with the cause by kneeling during national anthems and sporting attire that honored those killed unjustly while displaying Black Lives Matter proudly. In some instances, games and events were boycotted entirely. Even large companies and corporations showed their support with Black Lives Matter, instilling it in their messaging, advertising, work ethos, and symbolism. There is valid criticism, however, that big businesses are using the BLM movement to cash in on shifting social dynamics while still exploiting others in developing countries. And further criticism as to whether ongoing demonstrations will actually lead to concrete legislative change that can actually alleviate communities and redefine policing. But there's no doubt that the fight against racism and the call for equality has catapulted the Black Lives Matter movement to the forefront of social awareness, particularly in the West. And that's important, and at the very least, a much needed stepping stone towards addressing systemic racism. The coronavirus pandemic has, in many ways, forced a lot of us to reconsider what constitutes good leadership. Naturally, comparisons were made between world leaders and how their administrations initially responded to the pandemic, and there appears to be a recurring theme that sets them apart. Women just did it better. Economic professors from the University of Reading and the University of Liverpool published a report that analysed the initial responses of governments to the first wave of the pandemic. Both professors compared countries led by women to similar countries that were led by men, taking into consideration variables such as GDP per capita, population density, health expenditure per capita, and relative gender equality, just to name a few. And up until mid-May, for the most part, women leaders outperformed the men. 
For example, when looking at Taiwan and South Korea, we find that Taiwan recorded 440 cases and 7 deaths, while South Korea had just over 11,000 cases and 263 deaths. Likewise, over the same time period, Norway recorded 8,257 cases with 233 deaths, while Ireland had over 24,000 cases and 1,547 deaths. In fact, in another study published just a month later in July, it was found that until that point, countries with women leaders suffered on average six times fewer deaths than countries led by men, and that women-led governments managed to flatten the curve more effectively and faster. And that's something both these studies point to, that women leaders were more willing to get out in front of the virus and attack it from the outset with early lockdowns, contact tracing programs, and mandatory mask wearing. The studies also reveal that women leaders were more willing to abide by the science and listen to the experts, and were also more inclined than their male counterparts to risk enduring short-term economic losses from social restrictions and lockdowns in an effort to save lives. And their people noticed, with noticeable increases in their approval ratings due to their coronavirus responses. In New Zealand, Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern was re-elected in a historic landslide victory on the back of her world-leading coronavirus response. Of course, as the pandemic is still raging today, the numbers have since changed and follow-up reports are sure to come in the near future. But it's hard to deny that women leaders led from the front, most importantly, at the start of the outbreak. Certainly, there's a lot we need to learn from them. While the rest of the world seemed to be on the brink of implosion, the world of science and discovery actually had a pretty incredible year. Let's start with the vaccines. When China released the genetic sequence for the SARS-CoV-2 coronavirus on January 10, leading pharmaceutical companies got straight to work on developing new vaccines, and breakthrough firms such as Moderna Therapeutics, Pfizer and BioNTech focused their efforts on mRNA vaccines. As this method only requires scientists to recreate a small portion of the virus, potential vaccine candidates were developed really quickly, and first-stage trials were underway within a couple of months. When the UK granted emergency use authorization to the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine on December 2nd, it was the first time an mRNA vaccine had been approved for widespread use. Beijing-based biopharma company Sinovac has also developed a vaccine that had already been approved for emergency use in China back in July. Similarly, Russia's Sputnik V vaccine was approved for widespread distribution in August. Both of them are the more traditional viral vector vaccines, which employ inert versions of viruses to deliver the genetic cargo required for an immune response. This is the same method being used for the Oxford-AstraZeneca vaccine that is currently in Phase 3 trials. All of these vaccines have already shown promising results, but according to the World Health Organization, there are currently more than 50 COVID-19 vaccine candidates in various stages of trials all around the world. And the fact that we even have trial vaccines in less than 12 months, that's unprecedented. I mean, previously, the fastest developed vaccine was mumps vax for the mumps, and that took four years to develop. So these COVID-19 vaccines are the new benchmark and will set the standard for vaccine development in the future. And if that wasn't a good enough scientific achievement to come out of 2020, trust me, there were a whole lot more to choose from. And certainly too many for me to cover here. But I'm going to try anyway. Microsporidia MB, discovered off Lake Victoria, is found to be a microbial parasite that can prevent mosquitoes from spreading malaria. The closest black hole to us was recently discovered in a visible star system only a thousand light years away. A fossil of the world's oldest known land animal, a millipede that lived 425 million years ago, was discovered in Scotland. The cold atom lab on the ISS managed to forge the fifth state of matter on Earth's orbit, a Bose-Einstein condensate to study quantum mechanics and subatomic particles. Researchers discovered that conditional welfare payments to Indonesia's poorer communities actually helped reduce deforestation by 30%. The European Space Agency's solar orbiter took the closest ever images of the Sun. NASA's Dawn spacecraft found salt water that could harbor bacterial life on the surface of Ceres, a dwarf planet that lies in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. Africa was officially declared free from wild polio. At least 200 mammoth skeletons were uncovered at a construction site for a new airport north of Mexico City. Trace amounts of phosphine gas detected in Venus's atmosphere could tentatively point to the possibility of bacterial life on our neighboring planet. A fully intact carcass of an Ice Age cave bear between 22 and 40,000 years old was discovered in remote Siberia. 
27 well-preserved sarcophagi buried over 2,500 years ago on Earth in Saqqara, just south of Cairo. Scientists engineered plastic-eating superenzymes that can break down plastic bottles in days. Emmanuel Charpentier and Jennifer Downer became the first women to jointly win the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for their discoveries in CRISPR. Researchers were able to create the first ever room temperature superconductor by applying over 2.5 million atmospheres of pressure onto a compound of carbon, sulfur and hydrogen. NASA's OSIRIS-REx mission was able to make contact with asteroid Bennu and extract almost a kilogram of asteroid rock. SpaceX's Dragon Crew 1 capsule successfully transported four astronauts to the ISS, making it the first operational and commercial spaceflight. Google DeepMind's AlphaFold AI algorithm was able to accurately predict the shapes of proteins when they folded, solving a 50-year-old biology problem. And Singapore is the first country to approve lab grown meat made by taking animal cells and stimulating their growth with appropriate nutrients. And trust me, there were a lot more, and I had to skip over a bunch of them. But yeah, 2020 was a pretty good year for science. But overall, it was difficult for so many of us. But in the hardship, there have been some silver linings. Some have used this time to reflect on their lives and prioritize those who mean the most to us. Some have developed new skills or achieved a better work-life balance. Working from home is now a proven method that will shape the future of work culture. And more people are now aware of how fragile the environment is and how our actions affect the world around us. Each of us have been affected in one way or another. And the truth is, life before and after the pandemic will be different. But as vaccines roll out and solutions are found, it's also an opportunity for us to embrace the new normal and make the most of what the future has to offer. Here's hoping there are more good things to come from 2021.